Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 28th uh, lecture of surface engineering. Um, we have been discussing uh, 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 nitriding as an alternative to carburizing. So, where the strategy is based on um, introducing nitrogen to the surface, but unlike in carburizing, uh, nitrogen uh, does go to the interstitial uh, positions, locations but forms compounds. So, the strengthening primarily comes, uh, the strengthening usually arises from the uh, ability to form very hard uh, compounds, interstitial compounds, various types of nitrides. So, um, so today we, uh, yesterday, I mean uh, the previous lecture we discussed about uh, gas nitriding, uh, having nitrogen um, in the uh, gaseous atmosphere. And today we are going to discuss liquid liquid bath nitriding. So uh, we essentially have an aqueous bath, I mean a salt bath, which uh, we have it in the molten state, and then immerse the um, workpiece into the bath, and then allow the uh, nitrogen to be liberated from the salts, and then uh, get absorbed, and then gradually diffuse into the bulk of the solid from the surface. So as I said, we deal with molten salts. Uh, molten uh, sodium and potassium salts um, and they are uh, usually cyanides uh, in some cases cyanates and carbonates. So, carbonate is more like an activator, but uh, uh, cyanide is the main uh, source of nitrogen. In many cases we do not deal with cyanide directly uh, because it is highly toxic, extremely toxic. Uh, we deal with cyanates and for example, sodium cyanate at the temperature where we uh, do the nitriding process. So, typically around or about uh, 500 degrees centigrade, uh, this is where uh, uh, the cyanate uh, decomposes into sodium carbonate and uh, most importantly the sodium cyanide. So, this sodium cyanide actually is very important because in the process we get uh, uh, nitrogen liberated uh, and so the bath that is why the bath is called a uh, cyanide bath and uh, cyanide itself can actually react uh, with uh, uh, oxygen or other uh, gaseous substances in the bath dissolved in the bath and then liberate uh, further uh, nitrogen. But uh, cyanate having cyanate uh, is actually uh, what is normally practiced because it liberates uh, nitrogen and nitrogen in nascent form. So, this nascent nitrogen is very active can easily or immediately can get adsorbed to the surface and then diffuses into the bulk from the surface. So, we obviously create a diffusion profile which is uh, somewhat like this. So, this is depth and, uh, and this is the surface and this is the percentage nitrogen we are talking about. So, within a very shallow depth from the surface, we have a uh, reasonable amount of nitrogen and a few uh, almost uh, 6, 7 or even 10 percent of nitrogen at a very thin layer, but uh, certainly up to a certain depth of uh, a few millimeter or less than a millimeter, we have uh, uh, at least uh, one or more percentage of uh, nitrogen. So, when nitrogen diffuses, as I mentioned, it forms the iron nitrides. In fact, there are several types of nitrides uh, that are formed, but the most important and the most prevalent one which actually provides a very high hardness and wear resistance is the epsilon nitride, uh, which is a, not, a, not a, a pure line compound, not a fixed stoichiometric compound, can have a composition with a varying amount of nitrogen in it. And when this kind of a compound layer forms, it actually produces a so called a white layer onto the surface, which is effective in providing very high hardness, reasonably good corrosion resistance or passivity and also scuffing resistance for any amount of uh, relative motion between uh, 
solid surfaces. So, as I have been saying uh, in the last few lectures that uh, be it carburizing or nitriding or uh, any of the variants of these processes, these are essentially thermochemical processes. So, we need both temperature and change in composition in the surface and it is a diffusive process. So, obviously, a temperature dependent process. So, diffusion means it is a function of temperature. Um, the difference with uh, uh, previous uh, processes that we have discussed so far is the fact that here we are dealing with a liquid bath or an aqueous bath. Actually, it's a molten. To be more precise, is a molten salt bath. Um, temperature is uh, somewhere around 500, as I said, 500 to 550, or maybe 480 to 550 around that temperature. And uh, because of this exposure, for um, uh, it could be in the limit, uh, the minimum could be uh, about an hour, less than an hour, 30 minutes or so. But usually, about a few hours, maybe five, six hours at the most, depending on what level of thickness of the nitrated layer we desire. Um, so, what are the um, uh, trade-offs, what are the advantages or uh, benefits we derive? We derive high reproducibility, very precise, very good dimension and stability. Um, this is one very important, first of all we are heat treating at uh, 550 at the most. So, even if we quench after this, there is uh, less scope of distortion and even when we heat to 500 or so. Uh, there is expansion, but not a very large scale expansion. So, the uh, finished components can be directly subjected to nitriding because of this good dimension stability. We have high uh, scope of corrosion protection because these nitrides are extremely cathodic in nature. So, when you expose to um, uh, various kinds of oxidizing atmosphere in aqueous or in atmospheric condition, uh, the aggressive ions even including um, the halides, uh, they do not necessarily immediately can attack because of the protection given by these nitrides. So, we actually um, uh, the biggest uh, advantage is that uh, we create those nitrides series of nitrides which can provide very long term resistance to wear. So, they do not uh, uh, allow uh, easy uh, degradation or loss of material from the surface prevent seizure two surfaces do not allow the mating surface to form cold welding and then seize the uh, motion, uh, very little scope of scuffing because the hard surface does not allow scooping of material from the surface. And it also uh, provides uh, as I said uh, resistance against any kind of adhesion because this surface being very hard and um, uh, non reactive does not allow uh, diffusion to take place um, uh, transient or uh, long term with another mating surface. And uh, the another very, very important fact is that uh, though there is no direct uh, phase transition involved, but there is new phase formation which are these nitrides and because of the formation of the nitrides, we do get fairly um, uh, a good amount of uh, residual compressive stress uh, developed onto the surface because of which the fatigue strength also improves. So, there are multiple benefits. Now, at this moment, we need to spend a couple of minutes on understanding what is the microstructural evolution. So, if uh, let us say we are talking about a particular um, component, say uh, a reasonably complex shape of a gear, uh, uh, and uh, so what is important is that we retain the core, uh, we retain the core as it is so that it can. Uh, maintain a reasonably softer uh, microstructure or softer aggregate, so that the, um, uh, the toughness of the core is retained. But at the same time, if you look at this tip, we actually expect this tip to develop some amount of uh, very hard layer. And the typical thickness of this layer would be somewhat um, uh, not very high, maybe a uh, few, ten, maybe 10 to 100 micrometer and in the in some cases it can be even 1 to 2 millimeter. So, in order to develop this we expect these hard nitrides to form, but if you further zoom on to this you actually will see a gradation. If this is the surface and this is towards the core, then we will have a thin layer, we have a slightly thicker layer and a more thicker layer and then the substrate. So, in this uh, gradation, 
of let's say one, two, three, four uh, regions, uh, we will have uh, different levels of nitrogen penetration. Obviously, the surface which is exposed to the aqueous bath, so this is where uh, nitrogen comes in. So, obviously, the, the concentration of nitrogen in the first layer that we discuss uh, will have the highest concentration. So, let us say this is the so called first layer, and this is where we expect uh, uh, formation of uh, the zeta compounds. So, this zeta is basically Fe2n. And uh, here you require as high as about 11 to 12 percent of nitrogen. So, this is very high nitrogen and this layer if at all it forms, it actually is never a single monolithic layer, these are only dispersed compounds. So, this uh, uh, zeta Fe2n is, uh, is essentially um, only available in the form of dispersion or a very thin layer at the surface. But most importantly what we have is the layer below which is uh, the so called um, epsilon nitride. And this epsilon nitride I have already mentioned is typically um, a layer which is uh, uh, it can be Fe 3 n and Fe 3.5 n or something. So, essentially this is a a composite layer and uh, this is a compound layer and this compound layer uh, would require anything above uh, 6 to 8 percent of nitrogen. Then we will have uh, a gamma the third layer which will be predominantly gamma prime and uh, so this gamma prime essentially requires uh, a nitrogen content which can be uh, anywhere between um, say 2 to 6 percent and uh, then below this uh, we will we'll have the alpha layer and then we have the unaffected or unchanged substrate. Now, when I say alpha I mean actually not alpha alone maybe alpha and gamma and maybe at times gamma plus um, uh, uh, gamma prime or gamma plus. So, this is essentially this can be gamma plus gamma prime. Then uh, we will have when I say epsilon we actually mean uh, starting all the way from gamma prime uh, to uh, epsilon and then finally this is epsilon plus uh, zeta. So, we always have a gradation of microstructure. So, this is the substrate and then by substrate essentially will be alpha. So, we have then alpha and gamma. So, we are talking about uh, formation of uh, alpha. So, this is the pure alpha region. This is the two phase alpha plus gamma region. Then comes uh, formation of uh, gamma and in fact, uh, pure gamma prime is here which is uh, uh, an interstitial compound, but in between we have uh, regions which will have either uh, gamma plus uh, gamma prime or gamma plus epsilon. These are high temperature varieties. So, essentially if you are uh, referring, so this is, the te this is the temperature axis, this is how temperature is changing. So, typically the temperature band of treatment of nitriding would be around this. So, this is the temperature band and in this, this is the kind of phase aggregates that we are uh, discussing. So, alpha, then alpha plus gamma, then alpha plus gamma prime, then gamma prime, then gamma prime plus epsilon, then some amount of epsilon predominantly 95 percent epsilon and then in very rare cases we have uh, where we have done the treatment at slightly higher temperature and exposed for longer period of time, there is possibility of seeing some dispersion of the zeta nitrides. So, we see combination of these nitrides. So, after the required level of exposure, we started with all ferritic matrix with uh, some amount of dissolved nitrogen in it. Then we end up creating all kinds of nitrides layer wise. But these layers are not 100 percent, not monolithic of a single compound, they are all mixed compounds. And the volume fraction of these compounds actually vary uh, to higher and higher level as we go from bottom or core of the comp component. So, this is the core to the 
surface. Now, the, uh, the utility of the nitrided compound primarily depends upon how well these uh, uh, compounds are dispersed, what is the volume fraction, what is the size and the morphology and so on. So, this is, these are the typical zones. So, if I call this as first layer, then this is the second layer, then this is the third layer, the fourth layer and, and then we have the substrate. So, this uh, uh, depth wise we are talking about uh, very, very small layers can be anything like a few micrometers to few tens of a micrometer. The hardness is certainly much higher than what we can achieve in case of uh, 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 carburizing because of the presence of these hard nitrides. And uh, uh, so, they, the, so, this is the kind of depth that we aim to have and it depends on what material and what kind of service condition these components are exposed to. So, typically uh, uh, when we talk of uh, liquid nitriding, then we use the cyanate as the precursor and uh, when we talk of salt bath nitriding, then we can directly use the sodium cyanide salt. And these sodium cyanide salts at that high temperature dissociate and then provide uh, the ions and which father can dissociate and provide uh, in, 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 uh, in some specific uh, temperature and pH combination provide both nitrogen and carbon uh, in the nascent form in the bath. So, temperature is uh, slightly higher 550 to 570 whereas, uh, normally gas nitrating you do at uh, 480 to 5. 50 or so less than 550 uh, for salt bath nitriding because we need uh, two things here dissociation of the cyanide salt we also need mobility of the ions and uh, once these uh, nascent uh, uh, form of nitrogen or carbon is deposited onto the surface liberated onto the surface then we need diffusion. So, the formation of the compound layer which sometimes we call the white layer is what is responsible for this kind of very providing very hard surfaces and they comprise both iron nitrides and in some cases some special nitrides in case the material is uh, not plain carbon but an alloy steel. For example, if you have uh, we have already discussed if you have vanadium or uh, titanium or molybdenum, um, chromium all these elements have very high affinity for uh, nitrogen. So, and the diffusion zone is the graded zone that we just discussed uh, a few minutes ago. So, there you have a gradation. In fact, the same thing, these are real time microstructures. So, here we have a compound layer, which is the so called white layer. This is what we uh, mention as white layer. And then we have these various carbides, and, but this is also called the diffusion zone. That is because there is the micro, there is a clear gradation of the microstructure. The, not only the uh, amount of nitrogen uh, varying as we go down uh, the depth, but also the kind of phases, their identity and crystal structures, they also vary. But this is a fairly very, very hard layer. In fact, this is extremely hard layer, what we said just about um, a few, maybe about 10 micrometer or even less with uh, our, uh, with uh, um, with hardness uh, as high as uh, 70. But uh, one thing we must remember that this entire process of either liquid bath or salt bath nitriding, they are essentially aqueous bath or uh, molten salt bath processes. So, uh, what we were discussing that uh, if we actually want uh, to avoid um, direct use of cyanide. Uh, then we actually would rather take cyanate, but essentially this is through an oxidative process, but not a very stable compound. So, at about 500 and above this uh, cyanate actually will dissociate and then uh, can form um, uh, can actually get further oxidized and can form uh, or liberate nitrogen in the nascent form and carbon also in the nascent form. But this very process is actually uh, uh, a slightly different type of, I would rather say more than aqueous bath, they are salt bath processes, but um, uh, 
the main idea here is that compared to the previous processes here we are taking uh, advantage of the presence of both nitrogen and carbon. So, it is not the nitrides alone what we form is a mixed interstitial compound uh, uh, iron nitride iron carbonitrides and these because of the presence or the contribution of both nitrogen and carbon we call it nitrocarburizing. So, again um, uh, the, the process is about the same the bulk of the substrate is left unaffected only a few micrometers from the maybe few tens of a micrometer of the surface actually develops this hard layer of uh, uh, mixed or complex uh, carbon nitrides. Uh, sometimes these processes are also called tough nitriding. I mean these are tread names uh, used by various uh, manufacturers and it also depends on what kind of precursor salts they are using. So, sodium cyanide and cyanate mixture of them. Um, these rotating parts they are uh, very common to be exposed to such uh, nitrocarburizing processes. We always should remember that we are dealing with an extremely toxic bath and even the gas that uh, uh, emerges from the bath they actually uh, need to be treated before their discharge. So, the whole process has to be uh, extremely conducted very very carefully. Another variant of a very similar process uh, uh, one might wonder as to what is this difference we are talking about the one time we say nitrocarburizing and now we are saying carbonitriding. But uh, there must be a reason as to why we uh, actually swap the preference uh, between carbon and nitrogen. So, and when we say nitrocarburizing we conduct the uh, entire process at a temperature which is about 550, 570 or so certainly below the eutectoid temperature, below the A1 temperature. So, that means the whole process is conducted um, with uh, nitrogen as the principal uh, target and when we say nitrogen as the principal target what we mean is that the strengthening will come from nitrides, formation of nitrides. So, we actually end up forming nitride, but with a difference that those nitrides like we what we discussed in case of nitrocarburizing those nitrides would be interstitial compounds, but mixed or complex compounds uh, not pure nitride, but uh, carbon nitrogen together uh, into the matrix. Compared to that uh, carbonitriding is a process which is akin to carburizing to some extent, because uh, we are exposing to higher temperature. So, this is obviously above the eutectoid A1 temperature and in all probability we are into the gamma phase. So, we actually have more solubility and because we have more solubility and also carbon happens to be faster diffusing than nitrogen. So, we will see uh, in, a, in, the, in, in the process when we liberate both carbon and nitrogen carbon uh, diffuses faster nitrogen is slightly sluggish because of two reasons one is uh, the atomic diameter but also another reason being that nitrogen is prone to formation of nitride. So, when the compounds are formed then obviously nitrogen does not diffuse further. So, you during the uh, ingress of nitrogen into the matrix you progressively uh, uh, make different kinds of nitrides and, um, and hence the, uh, the rate at which nitrogen uh, goes inside is retarded carbon does not form such compounds. So, carbon will always try to uh, go through the, uh, the channels the interstitial channels and then squeeze past and then go farther inside and, and uh, diffuse uh, deeper inside. So, um, other difference is that instead of salts this is a gaseous process. So, essentially compared to the, uh, uh, the previous uh, aqueous or salt bath processes here is uh, a technique which is essentially based on gaseous atmosphere. So, um, the, ga the gaseous atmosphere in the furnace will provide both carbon and nitrogen. The precursor is propane and methane and uh, they in contact with certain catalysts will crack and then form both carbon. So, actually when you mix methane and propane with ammonia. So, this is the source for carbon and ammonia is the source for nitrogen. So, we actually are feeding a mixed gas 
and uh, when we feed the mixed gas we actually form we take try to take advantage of both advantage of having um, this kind of uh, hard uh, nitrides and also uh, uh, super saturating the alpha iron with carbon which actually subsequently can be quenched and uh, led to formation of martensite. So, um, but here the temperature is lower and because of the presence of, uh, of already existing nitrites the distortion is less case depth may be a little lower, but the hardness that we achieve is higher. So, this is how we actually treat uh, we essentially the, uh, I mean the process is a continuous process unlike most of the other batch processes. So, through a conveyor, a conveyor we actually feed the components. So, these are the engineering components which are being uh, subjected to carbon nitriding. So, we preheat and then we have carbon nitriding zone which is a gaseous atmosphere. Uh, having both uh, uh, some hydrocarbon and ammonia and they crack and then deposit carbon and nitrogen on the surfaces of these uh, solid components steel and then subsequently when it comes out of the bath we actually directly quench into an, a, a, a fluid bath where uh, the, the high temperature the hot materials get directly quenched and a part of it actually can uh, be um, converted to martensite. And once the quenching is over, then we take it out through the conveyor. So, we have both uh, formation of these mixed uh, compounds and martensite. So, it is uh, now time to summarize. Uh, we need to really compare the processes uh, of liquid bath nitriding, um, cyaniding, and so on and so forth. Um, and various salt bath processes uh, and with uh, gas nitriding or even with carburizing and see the relative advantages and disadvantages. The, uh, the main source of uh, strengthening in case of uh, nitriding we must remember is from the nitrides that we form. Uh, but in all these uh, salt bath processes, uh, since we deal with extremely toxic compounds like sodium cyanide, we have to be very, very uh, careful and always bear in mind that uh, this is of pre uh, the supreme interest uh, or importance that uh, the process is conducted uh, with extreme. Uh, we must take care of the safety uh, before and, and should not uh, create any possibility whereby the toxic gas or the, um, the bath can spill over. The nitrocarburizing and carbon nitriding as I just explained a few minutes ago essentially takes the advantage of in case of nitrocarburizing it is closer to nitriding. So, the strengthening comes from the nitrides and is conducted in salt bath or liquid bath whereas, uh, carbon nitride and at a slightly lower temperature below A 1 temperature. So, somewhere around 550, 580 whereas, carbon nitriding is a process where we again take advantage of both nitrogen and carbon, but we form uh, not only nitrides, but also uh, some amount of martensite coming from the dissolution of carbon. So, in the carbon nitriding process we conduct uh, the experiments at higher temperature say about um, any anywhere around 800 or 750 to 800 degrees centigrade, which is in the. So, we do have both alpha and gamma uh, ferrite and cementite ferrite and austenite and austenite absorbs a higher amount of nitrogen and carbon. So, we form both nitrides and martensite and we require a bit of quenching and another important distinction is that this is done in gaseous atmosphere. So, uh, some of the hydrocarbons like methane or propane provide the carbon and ammonia provides nitrogen. So, various engineering components uh, the gears, the shafts, the cams, the sprockets, uh, valves or various things actually are exposed to all these nitriding processes. And um, uh, one of the important feature is that uh, the nitriding uh, provides not only high hardness and wear resistance less distortion and uh, it also provides a highly passive layer. So, corrosion properties are also improved. So, I think with this we come to the end of this uh, particular uh, uh, discussion on uh, liquid salt bath nitriding and carbon nitriding and nitrocarburizing. Uh, we will 
end the discussion on nitriding related uh, uh, subject with the next one on uh, plasma nitriding. So thank you very much.